Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh teman-teman semuanya Selamat datang di Jembatan Dakwah Dan kali ini ada sebuah video dari Muhammad Ali lagi ya Tentunya ada seorang wanita yang datang dan bertanya Dan dia juga mengatakan bahwa Islam itu agama pagan Hmm, pagan? Islam agama penyembah berhala? Yakin lo? Dan gini jawaban super dari Muhammad Ali Simak video ini selengkapnya hingga akhir Agar kalian tidak salah paham Selamat menonton dan semoga bermanfaat Mari kita mulai Hi, um, so my question is, I'm a Hebrew, not a Christian anything, and I'm now going through this journey. Uh, my friend is giving me so much truth about Islam and the differences and um, just clearing up some things. So now that I'm on this journey of truth and trying to find out, I'm trying to just clarify a few things. You said you're so, a Hebrew, is that what you said? Yeah. What do you mean by that? Um, so basically... Why? Sorry? You, you you say you're a Hebrew Israelite. That's what yeah, well, yeah, I'm a Hebrew. Y- okay. Yasha Halite, yes. Um, yeah, I got, I got what you're saying, yeah. Yeah, so the okay. part of the black Hebrew community that we're now coming through. Okay. We do agree um, with a lot of teachings from Islam as well, um, but there's just a few things. So first things is, if you guys do worship um, the Most High and the same God as the God of the Bible, it's like, why do you pray towards the Kaaba? Because the Kaaba is known to have had other idols around it. And if you look at the Most High, when the Israelites were meant to go in, they were told to um, destroy anything that had to do with any the idols of the previous people says so then he wouldn't have commanded or told you to pray any direction we're told to just pray in your room secretly so why then is that such a big thing well i've got already a video on this like uh, you can search my channel you go on my channel and then you search the videos i have there's a specific video on this uh, does islam have pagan practices this is the title of the video yeah you can watch that video uh, to get a, a response of what you said but to say i don't agree with, with what you just said what you just said is based on a assumption what the, the what the bible says is historically a- accurate and you've not provided evidences that it is historically accurate we don't think the bible is historically accurate we don't think that jesus said that to begin with where's the evidence that he said that first when we see establish evidence that what the bible says is historically accurate and reliable then we can maybe now talk about okay and now how do we understand it but this is not the case we are saying uh, that the Kaaba, or what you referred to, it was built by Ibrahim. That's what we believe as Muslims. Mm-hmm. Kaaba was built yeah. by Ibrahim, Ibrahim. And he was commanded by Allah to, to build it, actually. Allah commanded Ibrahim, alayhi salam, to build the Kaaba. And uh, it was originally built as the first house built by Adam, as, uh, as many scholars have, have noted. And Abraham built it on the foundations after it was destroyed. He built it on the foundations that Adam built upon from the beginning. So Allah says in the Quran, When um, Abraham was lifting the foundations of the house, meaning that there was foundations already that he was lifting. So uh, we believe that this is a house of Allah that Allah Azza wa created for the act of pilgrimage. And pilgrimage is the act for the creator alone. In fact, when Muslims do pilgrimage, this is what they repeat literally. When we are in Mecca, when we do pilgrimage, when we do Hajj or Umrah, the minor pilgrimage or the major pilgrimage, we say that there is none worthy of worthy of worship or there is no partners with Allah. This is literally what we repeat. We say, labbaik Allahumma labbaik, labbaik la sharika laka labbaik. You have no partner. Inna alhamda wa ni'mata laka wal mulk. The praise and glory and all of that is, is only due to you. La sharika laka. There is no partner. So th- this is literally what Muslims repeat. It has nothing to do with paganism. It's the like exact... Uh, opposite of what uh, paganism is and pagan teachings are. Now, there was some statues that were put by the Arabs when the Arabs became pagan. And that happened when a uh, person was called uh, Amr ibn Luhay, specifically. He went, he traveled, and he went uh, to other lands, and he saw Persians, and he saw other polytheists worshipping idols, and then he introduced idol worship into Arabia. But in the beginning, there was no idol worship in Arabia. They always understood that this is the house of God that has been built by Abraham, who is the son his son Ishmael, where the Arabs come from? The Arabs come from Ishmael. The Arabs of today come from Ishmael. So they understood their father Ishmael, their, his father Abraham is the one who built this house. And that house was for the worshipping God alone. But later on, this idol worship was introduced. And Prophet Muhammad Islam completely destroyed all of these 300 idols that were around the Kaaba. When, when Muslims uh, came back to Mecca and uh, took back their houses, they did, the Prophet Islam, when he took authority in Mecca, he destroyed all of these idols. In fact, he told his companions like uh, Anas ibn Malik, do not see any idol and leave it. You have to break any idol. If you see any idol, break it. So this idea of idol worship, it is the exact, it is the biggest sin in, uh, that Islam uh, opposes. So for someone to come and insinuate that Muslims have anything to do with polytheism is completely ridiculous from a historical point. Right. So, okay, I understand that part. That's fine. 
But then um, my question is, if then it, it, it was built for me, I'm just still saying that you're saying that the Bible is a bit not accurate and there's no facts about it. There's no also record outside of the Quran that Abraham built that. So if you're coming from a standpoint from any other records aside from the Quran, there's no other actual proof that Abraham was commanded to build the Kaaba. It's just the only records we have in the Bible is that Abraham built an altar out of clay to the Most High in his journey to find the Most High. If you read the other books of Jubilees or Jasher or any other of the apocryphal books that have been taken out. So um, it's like for me, how can that be in, in quote verified aside from the scholars that qualify the Quran? Well, the only history of Arabia is found with the Arabs. No one else has recorded the history of Arabia except the Arabs. And the Arabs have recorded that Abraham built the house and Ismail built the house with him. And this is what we believe. We, we do not need to convince anyone with anything. No one else has a historical evidence that opposes it because no one wrote the history of the Arabs except the Arabs. So it's, it, you have two, one of two options either to accept the history the Arabs wrote about themselves or to claim that we don't accept it, which then we don't care. If someone accepts the history of the Arabs or not, it still makes it the history of the Arabs. Now, the question then now should be whether the Quran is true or not. And if the Quran is true, then Abraham did build the house of God and we are in the house of worship of God. That's it. But to insinuate is pagan. This is a different claim now than who built it or who didn't build it. That was not your original question. You insinuated things to do with paganism and there is no historical evidence for that. So if you talk about what the Bible says or the Bible doesn't say, as I said, where is the evidence that what the Bible says is historically reliable? Which Bible do you read first? Um, the closest one, which is KJV. Okay, so you read the King James Version. That was written mm -hmm. 611, uh, mm -hmm. 1611. How is that the closest? That because that manuscript. was... Yeah. Sorry, the closest to it, sorry. The closest one was because that was translated from King James from Hebrew directly, from Hebrew to Latin. So it has the closest translation from original Hebrew text is what history is saying. That's why King James has been told to be the closest to the original version. Well, that's inaccurate historically and inaccurate according to the uh, biblical criticism scholars because the King James is based on late manuscripts. It's not based on the earliest manuscripts. In fact, it's based on, you can say for 300 to 500, 600, this, this kind of date and range. It's not based on the earliest manuscripts. And you can see that found in the RSV. If you open the RSV, which is a revised version of the KJV, they say to you in the introduction that the King James has great defects, does not rely on the uh, on the earliest man. So it's not my claim now. It is the 50 scholars that wrote the, that did the RSV, right? So this is what Christians literally saying about their own book. So they say that this is, uh, has great defects. The King James version has a lot of errors, and it is not based on the earliest manuscripts, and that's why it required revision, and that's why they had the RSV and they had the NIV and all of these new uh, translations. But again. You don't have a Hebrew, when you say the original Hebrew, there's no original Hebrew anyways, historically. There's no carbon dated manuscripts from the first century. You have zero manuscripts, literally, from the first century, from the life of Jesus. There's nothing from that time that is carbon dated to that time. Second century, late second century, you have the P52, which is like a card, like small, like this size, which has no relevant or important information. So when you, you say that this is accurate because it's based on the old, uh, earliest, that's inaccurate, as I said, based on what Christians themselves say. And second, you don't have an original to begin with. Um, okay. You said two things there. First, the Christians themselves, I'm not taking the Christians, the Christians themselves are in fact been proven to be pagan. A lot of the, it, it added a lot of things inside that are not right. So yeah, you can say the Bible in itself is not accurate in terms of period of times and translations and things that have been taken out and put in and has been fabricated and whatnot. But there are things and commandments in there that from the most side that has stand at the test of time. So then I will use that as my base to be the fact. So it has been altered by some Christians and stuff. Don't get me wrong, but it doesn't change the fact that the commandments of the Most High are in the Bible. And then his words are still true. And the stories and some things do align yeah, so, throughout uh, history. Also, what I find, the, yeah. Go ahead. Go on, then, sorry. Go on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What I find extremely funny, like really, really, really funny. Like who wrote the King James Version? Um, well, well, whoever was during the time of under King James. You do not know? No, I know who, that King who led James the protestant, did Who led the protestant movement? Was it Martin Luther? Yes. Okay. So Martin Luther, who, who led the protestant movement, and he was like overseeing all of the King James, who a lot of people have already established historically, he was a homosexual, but that's a different story. Huh? So you got a king who was homosexual and you got Martin Luther, who is a Christian, because now you're blaming Christians. They're saying Christians, this, Christians, that. The people who wrote it are Christians. The people who passed it down to you are Christians. The people who gave it to you today are Christians. So you have to pick and choose. If they are not reliable, if the Christians are not reliable, then we cannot trust the scripture that they pass down to you. It's either they are reliable or they're not reliable. So if they are reliable, then those reliable people tell you that this translation is not accurate. 
And if they're not reliable, then you cannot then use the, the translation that they themselves wrote. Right. But then if the same story then aligns with some of the stories in the Quran, then I can also say that, okay, these stories match, then it could be a, the truth. So yes, they might have added their own stuff from the translation, but there is a baseline story that happened. Okay, because... thank you. So, so thank you. because I really appreciate this because right now you answered your questions from the beginning of the discussion. So you, you said, use the Quran as a criteria now. You said the criteria is the Quran because the Quran says it. Therefore, it is true. So the Quran says that Abraham built the house, but you were arguing this point. So if the Bible says different, then we say that it is corrupted and changed by the Christians. We don't accept that the Christians changed and corrupted. We believe the truth that Abraham built this house for the worship of God alone. Because the Quran is the criteria, as you just stated yourself. And because the Quran is the criteria and they know right or wrong, then we do not have to even ask these questions about paganism and all of what you were saying from the beginning. Because the Quran is the criteria and these scriptures have already been changed. And they, this is the point that I was making from the beginning of the discussion. Um, okay, I didn't say the, criteria, the Quran is a criteria. I said books like the Quran have things. So other religions of so baseline have been the same. So if, if we're using it because so far the only book that has been deemed intact is the Quran so far. Based on scholars and stuff like that. The same scholars that are saying that's been seen. So that's fine. We don't know for sure. But I'm not. I'm just. My original question was just about why do you follow the Quran? That's the whole thing. But um, genuinely, that's that's my main concern. But you've cleared that up regarding why they do they why the couple was created. And if you're following the Quran, that's it because nobody knows the history of the Arabs except for the Arabs. That's fine. And also with the Christian stuff, yeah, that's a different topic um, as well. But I do take the word of the Bible because it, it's been proven through time. The history and stuff have been proven through time. Prophecies have come through. So when those things are being proven through through time, you can say, okay, even though there has been some fabrication, there is some truth within the book. Yeah, but you you yourself mentioned the Quran, not me. You said books like the I Quran. And, and, and that's why I mentioned the Quran, right? That's why I said this is the criteria because you yeah. mentioned it. And the thing is, there is no other books that can be a criteria because you cannot provide any reliable other books that are preserved. You yourself mentioned the reason. The reason mm -hmm. the Quran is the criteria is because it is preserved, even according to the testimony of non-Muslims who went and investigated the manuscripts. And when you say we don't know, no, we know we've got manuscripts that can be carbon dated and people who are non-Muslims att attesting to that, that have no gain for them to attest to the fact that, that, that this is preserved. So if the Quran is preserved, now you say you, you trust the Bible because there's many prophecies and this and that. Which prophecies are you talking about? Okay, let's say the prophecy of Daniel, for example, has come true. Okay, um, huh? When he gave the Daniel Jews of Nebuchadnezzar. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that's when we tell get me, the Tell me the prophecies. What does it prove and what does it say? Um, so basically, and it said, and then there will be a statue of stone, uh, of gold, and then of brass, and then of iron, I think, and then an iron, of bronze, and then iron and, and iron and clay at the end. And then that showed throughout time of all the different periods after that happened, of all the nations that came through after that. that yeah, but, 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 yeah, but the earliest manuscript that is saying that is after the fact, not before it. So, so it, is, it cannot be considered a prophecy if the earliest manuscript you have they claim it was written before, but they have nothing that they can prove that from that time that was before. They have this prophecy later, written later on after the fact happened. So we can easily say someone wrote that down after the fact took place. So oh. basically, this is not a proof for, every, for anything. It cannot be a proof if it's written after the fact. Okay. If the stuff like the chariots and wheels and stuff would be found at the bottom of the Red Sea and stuff within, in terms of the, the exodus occurring. Okay, um, that's that's a very basic thing. There was people fighting wars near the Red Sea, and there was chariots and this. Anyone can say okay. that. Was, okay. Deuteronomy twenty eight sixty eight, and I shall send uh -huh. you back in captivity on ships. Slavery happened. No, no. Again, uh, this is talking about the. Uh, by the way, to the, the Jews is addressing the Jews. Uh huh. Yes, addressing addressing the children children of Israel. And again, that was written after the fact. You're talking about there's two two and there's two exiles. Uh, there is the the Assyrian exile uh, that happened to the Jews, and then the, later on you've got the Babylonian exile that happened after, which is the big exile. But there was, before, there was also the Assyrian exile. So you have the Assyrian and Babylonian exile, and, and you can say that was written also after the fact. No, okay, hold on. I'm then just saying, you... like... I'm just <laughs> yeah. saying, like, <laughs> no, but no, the thing no, is, no, where do you look, 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 <laughs> ya kita nunggu masih nunggu ya nanti uh, Admin bakal terjemahin lagi yang part dua nya di mana perdebatan ini cukup sengit ya um, kita tahu sendiri bahwa sesungguhnya Ka'bah itu bukanlah berhala teman-teman itu hanyalah kiblat kita tidak menyembah Ka'bah Ka'bah itu hanyalah kiblat ya teman-teman agar umat Islam itu uh, menjadi satu satu arah di depan kiblat jadi kita tuh kalau sholat tuh enggak menghadap ke kanan, menghadap ke kiri. Kalau ada kiblat di depan kita, ya udah kita menghadap kiblat, gitu. 
Jadi kalau misalnya nggak ada kiblat ya nanti ada yang apa namanya ada yang menghadap ke kanan, ada yang menghadap ke kiri, ada yang menghadap ke uh, apa namanya ke uh, ke timur, ada yang menghadap ke barat, ada yang menghadap ke utara dan hal seperti itu tidak menyatukan ya teman-teman. Apalagi misalnya nih Ka'bah itu kan kalau kita sembah apa mungkin Ka'bah itu diinjek-injek? Nggak mungkin kan Kalau kita ganti kiswahnya kan Kaabah diinjek-injek Siapa yang berani menginjek-injek sesembahan Coba Kalau Kaabah itu sesembahan Nggak mungkin itu diinjek-injek teman-teman Nggak mungkin Gimana coba hmm? Ya kurang lebih seperti itu ya teman-teman Jadi memang uh, Kaabah itu bukan sesembahan Kita tetap menyembah Allah yang Maha Esa uh, Kaabah itu hanyalah kiblat untuk mempersatukan kita Jadi uh, menurut admin apa yang dikatakan oleh wanita tersebut yang mengenai Islam adalah agama paganisme memang tidak benar. Gimana menurut kalian? Simak video ini selengkapnya hingga akhir. Eh sorry, simak video maksudnya simak video part keduanya ya. Sampai jumpa pada video part 2. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi